and uh, 86% said it should be in the first six months. So building, you know, kind of this, these good uh, capabilities and behaviors and values early, uh, including all the things uh, listed here, is really important and a real benefit both to the individual and the organization. Back to you. Yeah. No, I appreciate that, Claude. You know, to, and if, if it helps, if we play this forward a little bit, so if you look at the the reality of, the, of that research, and folks are still wrestling, well, well, hold on a second. I, maybe I'm already doing this today. Maybe maybe I'm just calling it something different in my organization. Let me run you through these eight because uh, the idea is that if you're doing this right and you're approaching this idea of building or you've already built or you're in flight, um, you should be a far skewed to this left column, if you will, uh, in terms of defining hallmarks as opposed to no. And, and I think I put eight sort of critical defining constituent components of what a true capability academy is. So we can fly these all out. I won't speak to every single one of them, but I, I would like to call out a couple of these I think become really important. And this, this first one, maybe I'll start with the very first one there. This idea of having this sort of unified point of entry with its sort of user interface and user experience. Again, your, your front door to learning, you may have made some very purposeful choices to say, listen, we have made a 20 plus year investment in our LMS. And that is the primary point of entry for all things learning across our org. Or you know what? That was not the best user experience. We've decided to layer on a, uh, an experience type platform that, that, that does a board of the personalized recommendations. That's fine. Line, uh, in terms of what, what tool set you, you picked, but the, the key is if it's void of that connective tissue and all that you're doing is creating these very disjointed learning experiences based upon micro learning assets or sort of free form, that's a problem. And that's not a capability cap because what it doesn't do is get to that primary slide uh, that Claude just showed, which is the organizational benefits. And he was talking specifically, and Claude, you're talking about leadership development, but I would argue that's for almost every critical performance readiness capability you want to develop across the org. If you're doing it in this isolated, disparate approach, it's often simply a benefit to the individual. And so how does that actually translate you know, into the rest of the org? The other one that I that I want to sort of point out here, and I think, you know, we and I say we is, is sort of a representation of the provider side of the house in this third bullet of saying, listen, you can get, you know, sort of nearly everything you want because content is at your fingertips from all these third party providers that are out there. And if you roll them together and you aggregate them and make them personalized, that should be enough to develop your workforce. I, I think what we're finding and a big a uh, line of demarcation and differentiator for why folks embark on the Capability Academy approach is to say, listen, because of our industry, our vertical, the specificity of what we're trying to relate to folks, we need to be able to interweave and to bring front and center our client-specific approaches, processes, paradigms, specifics about how we're educating our individuals, whether that's products or services or just the, their overarching approach to the market. So having a system and a platform in many ways that allows you to do that and not just rely on external assets, I think becomes a critical piece as to why you would go about and should you go build a capability academy, right? There's subtle nuance in insurance verticals that you're simply not going to go be able to find third-party content assets that can develop your people in that way. You know, maybe there are some genericized ones, but I would argue that almost every vertical, pharma, automotive, financial services have specificity of organization that needs to be imparted to its individuals. And, and so weaving those together uh, is important. Is that is that bounce towards the bottom? I, I think this is another one that you know the training provider landscape um, is 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 big. And if I just back up for thanks, which if I got one second, I'll, I'll I'll close on this one. But this idea of we're trying to make it L and D budgets have gotten tighter and leaner, not expanded massively. The 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 request of them to execute on behalf of the business, I think, is amplified massively, especially with with the nature of the pandemic for these past two, uh, two plus years. So if I look at that sort of penultimate uh, component of what makes a true hallmark of the Capability Academy, if you've been uh, slug, you know, basically slugging it out and trudging along with trying to compile this with your real-time chat client and your virtual presentation delivery uh, modality and your system of record for your structured content, that's a daunting task.